everyone. In the previous class, we discussed about uh, the support system and uh, to be specific, we discussed uh, grouting uh, in rocks. Uh, so, today we will uh, have uh, the discussion on a new topic that is the determination of in situ state of stress in rock masses and rocks. So, in this connection, uh, we will first take up uh, the uh, test which is called as flat jack test. So, first we will discuss few aspects related to in situ stresses and then we will learn about this test including the apparatus, how this is carried out and then how the analysis of the test data is uh, done to obtain the in situ state of stress. So, coming to the in situ stress, uh, we know that uh, the underground rock masses, uh, these are subjected to uh, the compressive stresses which generally increase with uh, depth. The data that we have over a period of many years, it indicates that uh, the vertical stress, it varies in a more predictable manner as compared to the horizontal stresses as the vertical stress is uh, primarily uh, affected by the weight of the overburden while the horizontal stresses uh, can be the function of uh, various tectonic activities as well. So, upon the excavation uh, in the rock mass what happens is uh, the natural state of stress gets disturbed locally uh, because uh, of the fact that uh, rock mass attains a new state of equilibrium. So, the stress uh, around the opening resulting from uh, various man made activities uh, is termed as induced stress as against the virgin stress or the absolute stress which describes the original and undisturbed state of stress. The natural state of stress is what we call as in situ stress. So, these stresses can be very high to cause uh, the rock bursting, spalling, buckling, heaving or uh, other uh, ground control uh, problems. So, it is extremely important for us to know that what exactly is the in situ state of stress at any particular location uh, in the rock mass. So, Optimum shape, orientation and layout of underground structures as well as the effectiveness and ultimate cost of rock support system, these are all significantly influenced by the magnitude of in situ stresses. So, important for us to know the in situ stresses. So, for that purpose, we have one test called flat jack test with us apart from the other tests uh, that is uh, hydraulic fracturing test that we will discuss later. So, this flat jack test is intended for the determination of rock stress parallel to and near the exposed rock surface in an excavation. Please keep that in mind that if we are conducting the flat jack test, this is what that we are going to get is the rock stress which is parallel to and near the exposed rock surface in an excavation. Each measurement that is done during the flat jack testing gives us the stress in one direction only and therefore, to obtain the complete stress tensor we need to have a minimum of 6 measurements in independent directions. This method involves the observation of the movement of pairs of uh, measuring pins which are located on each side of a slot when the slot is cut. So, basically let us say that uh, this is uh, what is a uh, the rock mass and then we have the two pins say this one and this one and there we need to cut a slot in between these pins like this. 
to conduct the test. And then what is done when this slot is cut what will happen there is going to be the separation because of this slot and that will become the stress free boundary and there is going to be the redistribution of stresses. So, what we do is we put the flat jack in this slot and then uh, it is pushed so that uh, this distance between the measuring pins is already known to us. So, the pressure that is required so that the distance between the pins they are maintained is what indirectly will give us uh, the in situ state of stress. How we will see? The basically, this is what is a uh, philosophy of this particular test. So, when the slot is cut and then the subsequently when the pressure is applied to the internal surface of the slot, how it is done we will see. So, the measurements which are uh, taken these uh, can be carried out even in fractured rocks provided uh, that in the fractured rock uh, it is possible to cut the slot and uh, to have it open throughout the process of installation of the flat jack which is done inside this particular cut. The method may be used on the materials uh, that do not really exhibit reversible elastic properties or isotropy provided the, the corrections which are made to validate the results this is uh, as per ISRM. So, here is uh, we are uh, seeing uh, the two flat jacks of two different shapes. So, you can see that why it is called as flat jack. So, it is kind of a flat plate here. Flat jack test let us again understand the philosophy with the help of these figures. So, basically this test involves the placement of two pins which are fixed into the wall of an excavation. So, you see that if this is the wall of the excavation two pins are fixed at a distance of d from uh, each other. Uh, this distance d it can be measured accurately how the distances are measured etcetera that we will see little later when we discuss about the instrumentation and monitoring. Then a slot is cut into the rock between the pins. So, you can see that the uh, this is what is the rock mass and the sigma naught is the in situ state of stress vertical stress here. So, this uh, is the slot which is cut uh, between these pins. So, if the normal stress is compressive which is shown in this particular figure uh, what will happen the moment you cut the slot the pins will start moving together. They will try to close the slot because there is going to be the redistribution of stresses in the vicinity of this slot. So, what happens then we place the flat jack and grout it into the slot. So, you can see that this yellow portion this is what is the flat jack. Now, on pressurizing the flat jack the pins will move apart and we have an assumption here in this test that when the pin separation distance. Uh, it reaches the value it had before the slot was cut. The force which is exerted by the flat jack on the walls of the slot is same as that was exerted by pre existing normal stress. So, see, so, you see what happens we cut the slot we provide a flat jack. So, when we cut the slot these start coming together. So, when we provide the flat jack then this exerts the pressure on the inside walls of the slot such that the pressure which is exerted by the flat jack to have the same pin separation distance which was earlier before the slot was cut. When uh, they achieve the same distance again. So, whatever is the force which is exerted by the flat jack on the walls of the slot it is going to be the same as that exerted by pre-existing normal stress. 
So, this is how the typical results of a flat jack test look like. So, we have the distance between the pins and the applied pressure. So, uh, during the jacking and then the slotting, uh, in the slotting what will happen when you create the slot the distance will be reduced. So, you see that if the distance between the two pins is uh, d which is shown here. So, when the slotting is done this will be reduced right from the like uh, this pin and this one they will move towards each other and uh, when we start applying the pressure to the flat jack that means the process of jacking. So, we keep on increasing the pressure till the time that we receive uh, or we get the earlier distance between the pins which is let us say d naught. So, this one is what is uh, going to be equal to the in situ state of stress which is given here as Pc equal to sigma. So, you see that the pin separation in the beginning it was d naught and with the excavation it reduces and then you install the flat jack and you start applying the flat jack pressure and when you apply that pressure again that pin separation starts increasing and then the moment it goes uh, or it becomes equal to the uh, earlier pin separation before the slot uh, cutting that is what is going to be the identification for the cancellation pressure which we represent as PC. Coming to the apparatus as far as flat jack test is concerned, uh, it is comprising of uh, many components. The first and the foremost and most important one is the flat jack. It consists of uh, two flat sheets of steel plate or any other suitable material which are uh, welded together around the edge to form a flat envelope of at least uh, 0.1 meter square area. And, uh, these also incorporate a hydraulic inlet tube with connection to a hydraulic hose and bleed valve. Uh, because uh, uh, these uh, jacks are supposed to exert the pressure on the inner wall of the slot. So, that pressure is being uh, mobilized with the help of hydraulic pump. So, accordingly such arrangements are to be needed. I showed you the picture of a typical flat jack just uh, a short while ago. So, selected shape of the flat jack depends upon the method which are which is chosen to cut the slot. So, I showed you one was a D shape uh, flat jack another one was uh, the rectangular shape of the flat jack. Uh, here uh, one needs to take a uh, lot of care in welding which is uh, carried out around the edge of the flat jack and uh, around the bleed tube inlet so that the jack can expand flexibly without leaking when it is installed and inflated to full pressure test. So, you take a look here again these are the two pins the slot is cut flat jack is installed and you can see that the pump is there with the help of which you mobilize the pressure. The moment the pressure comes here this uh, inflates. So, we need to be careful about the welding which is uh, done around the edge of the flat jack and around the bleed tube inlet. The second component of the apparatus uh, is uh, a hydraulic pump. This is operated either uh, manually or electrically with an attachment to the load maintainer or maybe the proven ring. Uh, the pressure uh, should be measured on uh, gauges having an accuracy of at least uh, 5 percent of the estimated uh, stress. The system connected by the high pressure hoses should be capable of maintaining any pressure within the desired range uh, for a period of at least 5 minutes. So, this is how uh, the zoomed version of this setup looks like. So, this is the rock mass in which the slot has been cut and these are the two pins. Uh, 
uh, which uh, which were marked uh, or which were installed at a distance of uh, say d naught and uh, here you see that you have installed the flat jack this is uh, the flat jack and is the connection to the hydraulic pump so that uh, the uh, pressure can be mobilized then uh, we have the third uh, component is the two or more pair of uh, measuring pins which are grouted into the hole uh, in the uh, rock on each side of uh, flat jack slot. So, it is not that uh, you will have uh, two pins on one side of the flat jack, no that is not correct. It should be on the either side of the flat jack slot. So, the typical pin is uh, the 12 uh, millimeter diameter and 150 millimeter in length. However, the actual dimensions will depend upon the quality of the rock. The exposed end of each measuring pin and the separation D between the measuring pins should uh, suit the measuring instrument. Now, in addition to the surface measurement pins, uh, some borehole instrumentation can be installed uh, to measure the stresses. So, these uh, what all are these instrumentation that we will discuss as a part of the next chapter. Uh, so, when uh, the near surface rock appears to be damaged by the excavation works, it is uh, preferable to measure the displacements at a sufficient depth to avoid the damaged rock. So, as I mentioned that borehole instrumentation should be done, but then in case if near uh, surface rock uh, seems to be damaged, then uh, we can install uh, the instrumentation at a sufficient depth. The fourth component is a demountable mechanical or electrical uh, displacement gauge. It has a average uh, gauge length between 150 and 220 millimeter or for larger flat jacks it can be one third to half of the size of the flat jack. The measurement range uh, for these should be at least 5 millimeter and the resolution of each reading should be 0.002 millimeter or even better than this. The next component as far as the apparatus is concerned is an appropriate rock drill or saw to cut the flat jack slot. It is extremely important in activity during the conduct of flat jack test. So, basically here two slots may be formed by cutting overlapping drill holes. Uh, this is also called as stitch drilling by the circular saw or uh, the wire saw. So, when we use the overlapping drill holes, these slots should have a diameter not exceeding 40 millimeter and should overlap by uh, 1 by 3 to half of the full diameter. The next component is uh, the mounting frames, templates, jigs and the other equipments. These are used to facilitate the accurate drilling of holes for the measuring pins, then installation of the measuring pans and cutting of the flat jack slots. Then finally, we have uh, the grout, grout mixing and uh, grout placing equipment if it is needed. Uh, this is for the installation of measuring pins and the flat jack. So, this grout should be of the strength similar to that of the rock that is uh, being tested. It should not be weaker than that rock or nor it should be stronger than that because in that case when uh, the flat jack exerts the pressure on to the ins inner walls of the slot, uh, it may happen that uh, grout may fail earlier. So, then you will not get the value of the proper 
in situ state of stress. Then uh, uh, for this uh, grouting purpose, uh, Portland cement or epoxy resins are commonly employed. Uh, the epoxy resins uh, gain uh, full strength more rapidly and uh, hence these are uh, usually used uh, for anchoring uh, the measuring pins. This we have discussed when we were discussing about the uh, different types of rock bolts and there we discussed in detail about the uh, mechanically anchored rock bolt and resin anchored rock bolt. So, there also I mentioned uh, this uh, particular property of the resin anchored rock bolts to you. Now, coming to the procedure. So, first important thing is that what should be the site? It means that let us say uh, the underground excavation is to be done maybe for a few kilometers, let us say some tunnel. So, at what location in those uh, kilometers should we choose for conduct of the flat jack test? So, there are few aspects that one needs to keep in mind. So, first we discuss about some of those issues. So, the first point that one needs to keep in mind is that in the selection of a zone for rock uh, testing, uh, the consideration must be given to the number of tests which are to be carried out in this zone. I told you that a minimum of 6 tests uh, are needed in independent directions if one wants to obtain the complete stress tensor. But usually we carry out additional tests also at uh, any one location to enable a best fit to be obtained mathematically following the assessment of the results. The preferred test layout in a tunnel or edit is to carry out 9 tests out of which 3 are in the roof, 3 in the side wall and 3 in the face. So, typically here this figure shows that how the flat jack slots are made in the rock mass and how the flat jacks would be installed. So, you see this is all rock mass outside the excavation. So, the uh, flat jacks which you are seeing here uh, not really flat jacks, but the slot for uh, flat jacks that you are seeing with the uh, mustard color here. So, this is how these are installed 3 in roof, 3 in side wall and 3 in the face. The tests uh, should be as close as uh, possible without interfering with the one another and uh, should be a minimum of uh, 5 times the tunnel diameter away from the from any other heading if there is. Uh, the second point which one needs to keep in mind as far as site selection is concerned is that once you determine the general position for the test zone, the excavation in the area must be carried out with maximum care. Pre-splitting of the test edit is suggested followed by the careful hand excavation and removal of all the debris material which is there because of the excavation. Then uh, uh, coming to the selection and preparation of individual test locations. So, what we did till now is that we select a zone of testing. Now, we select the uh, individual test location. So, the first point which needs to be kept in mind is that each test location should be in a firm, flat or slightly concave rock surface. When this is struck with a drill, steel or uh, rod, the rock should produce a ringing sound and it should not sound hollow. So, we need to be careful wherever we are choosing these test location. The rock should be firm, it should produce a ringing sound. So, should no suitable location be immediately available, in that case hand or pneumatic tool excavation must be used to prepare the test surface. Proper consideration should be given to a possible modification of the tunnel geometry by the local over 
excavation. Next point that is to be kept in mind while selection and the preparation of individual test locations is the distance between the test location and any significant geological discontinuities or irregularities on the rock surface. There can be the uh, presence of let us say a fall zone or the shear zone. So, that we need to keep in mind. So, wherever we choose the location uh, that should be at least uh, uh, 3 times the length of the flat jack slot away from uh, these uh, uh, discontinuities or the irregularities. So, the tests in closely jointed rock can be conducted uh, provided that the slot can be excavated and kept open long enough uh, to install the flat jack. Coming to the calibration of uh, the uh, various components. So, here the edge effects which are caused by welding particularly when you have the small size flat jacks. These lead to the hydraulic pressure within the jack being higher than what is being exerted by the flat jack on the walls of the slot. So, what will happen in uh, this case is that the result that we are getting these are higher than what uh, actually is being exerted in the field. So, this is not going to give me the correct picture of the in situ state of stress. So, one needs to be careful about it and usually flat jack suppliers uh, should measure this difference uh, using the suitable lab procedure and uh, should supply an appropriate calibration factor with each of the flat jack. You must have carried out a hydrometer test in the soil mechanics. So, there also you need to calibrate any hydrometer. I mean this is used for the classification of the fine grained soil. So, any of uh, such apparatus which uh, needs this uh, calibration to be done, usually this information is uh, provided by the uh, supplier. All the pressures and uh, displacement measuring equipment, uh, these are to be calibrated prior to their use in each test series. Uh, the calibration should be done by an independent testing labs. Coming to the installation and uh, the testing aspect for flat jack test. The first point that one needs to keep in mind is that the long dimension of the proposed flat jack slot should be oriented perpendicular to the direction in which the surface rock stress is to be determined. So, ideally it should be perpendicular, but then uh, an error of plus minus 3 degree can be allowed. Then the second point is uh, that uh, the pairs of measuring pins are to be located symmetrically across the marked flat jack slot location. For example, uh, this was the rock mass and we had uh, the flat jack slot like this and we had two pins here. So, the assumption we hear is that these pins these should be placed symmetrically with reference to this particular slot. Not that on one side you have lesser uh, uh, distance between the slot and the pin and on other side you have more distance. So, this distance d between the pins is determined by the displacement gauge. A line joining the individual pins of each pair should be within 3 degree to normal to the slot. This means uh, if this is the slot, so the normal to the slot is this. So, the distance which you measure, uh, it should be between plus minus uh, 3 degree to the normal of the slot. Then the next step which one needs to keep in mind is that uh, the templates are to be placed on the prepared rock face and the measurement pin positions uh, be marked. The holes into which the measuring pins are to be grouted 
are to be drilled, the pins fixed in place and initial separation readings are taken. So, see this is how the procedure is. First of all, we mark the location of the pin position. Then we put, uh, then we have the holes in which the measuring pins are to be grouted. So, we drill those holes, then we fix these pins into those holes and then we take the initial separation reading between the two pins. Now, these readings should be repeated a sufficient number of times to achieve a repeatability of 0.005 millimeter. This is a very, very important observation which is the initial separation reading. So, one needs to be careful here. Then uh, the next step after uh, fixing these measuring pin is uh, the cutting of the slot. So, one should be taking enough care to maintain the slot in required direction and uh, perpendicular to the rock face. This I have explained and discussed with you couple of times in this class only. So, it is usual to cut the slot deeper than the dimension of the flat jack obviously and uh, to set the loaded area back from the rock face uh, by a minimum of uh, maybe 25 uh, millimeter. Uh, why we do this is that uh, this prevents the local failures of the rock uh, when uh, the pressure is applied uh, through the flat jack. Uh, when uh, the coring is uh, used, uh, the cores should be retained placed side by side and photographed to record the geological feature of the test area. So, here I have uh, put one of uh, such uh, data. Uh, so, this is how the cores should be arranged uh, and placed side by side. In cases where uh, no cores are available, the character of the rock should be recorded by the observation of the rock face or by drilling at a location which is no closer than two flat jack lens in the test area. Then uh, uh, further sets of uh, displacement readings are also to be taken after cutting the slot to record the amount of slot closure. Whether this closure is instantaneous or it is time dependent that also should be recorded with the help of these set of displacement readings. Then this flat jack is inserted fully into the slot and if it is necessary it should be grouted and uh, you should take proper care uh, not to trap pockets of air in the grout in the process of this grouting. Now should this occur that is if there is uh, the pockets of air in the grout, then in that case failure of the flat jack is likely or if, even if the flat jack is not failing, whatever test results that you are getting, these may not be reliable. So, you need to be careful about this aspect while going for the grouting of the flat jack. Then the next step is uh, we let the grout set. And once it is set, the pressure in the flat jack is increased using the pressure increments that are determined from the magnitude of the displacement measurement and of course, the control of the hydraulic pumping system. So, we apply the pressure, then we measure the displacement and we see whether it has reached to the original initial separation reading or not. If it is not, then we further apply the pressure to the flat jacks. These pressure increments should allow a minimum of 10 readings for the expected maximum pressure range. How to handle these readings? So, the readings of the pin separation these are to be taken at each pressure increment. This pressure should be increased until the separation of the pins is same as it was before the slot was cut. 
So, you see this I also explained earlier. So, in the beginning you had uh, the separation as D naught. So, upon the excavation of the slot what will happen? This separation will get reduced. Now, you start applying the flat jack pressure. So, once you apply that uh, the walls of the slot, inner wall of the slots they are subjected to pressure. So, they start moving apart again on the influence of the pressure that is exerted by the flat jack. And then continuously corresponding to each pressure increment we are measuring the pin separation continuously. So, the moment this pin separation it reaches to the original value d naught. So, we just take the value of that flat jack pressure and then we record that this is called as cancellation pressure and we are representing it as p c. Now, coming to the calculations that means we have uh, conducted the test we have recorded the data. Now, how to uh, go ahead uh, as far as calculations are concerned and then how to interpret that what are the state of in situ stress. So, the first one is uh, the recorded hydraulic pressures these should be corrected to give applied slot pressure using the edge effect and pressure gauge calibration factor. So, this I discussed with you when we were discussing about the calibration of the flat jacks. Uh, then the second one is uh, the slot closure and uh, the opening values. So, these should be calculated for each pair of pins and uh, for each sawing or pressurization increment by subtracting the initial value from the subsequent reading. This is basically a usual procedure in uh, various uh, uh, pressure versus deformation uh, tests or the test where we get pressure versus deformation characteristics such as a simple example is a plate load test. Then the third one is uh, the closure and opening of each pair of pins. Uh, these are to be plotted against applied pressure to determine average cancellation pressure. Then finally, we try to calculate the stress component which are acting perpendicular to the plane of the flat jack before cutting the slot. This may be taken as approximately equal to the average cancellation pressure. Of course, uh, some error will be involved to the tune of maybe uh, plus minus uh, 5 percent provided the pin separation versus the pressure curve are determined by the series of loading and unloading cycles. These do not show noticeable hysteresis. So, this is how we had the flat jack slots we discussed this. So, in this method of stress determination with flat jacks positioned as uh, has been shown in this particular figure, the results in the determination of the disturbed stress components uh, in the immediate vicinity of the opening. Now, this information can be extrapolated from the opening outward to the undisturbed virgin stress by application of the theory of elasticity or by numerical modeling techniques. So, how this is done we will take that up with the help of an example now only. So, here is an example. So, please read the statement. We had three flat jack test here which have been made close to each other in the wall of a long straight tunnel. So, you see that it has been shown in the figure long straight tunnel the axis of which dips at 7 degrees. So, you see this is the axis of the tunnel it and it is dipping 7 degrees. The measurement position is approximately 250 meter below the ground surface that means the overburden is 250 meter. And it is assumed that the flat jacks are in the same stress field. So, the slots for the flat jacks were cut normal to the wall of the tunnel and these were oriented relative to the tunnel axis as shown. So, you can see that how the 
uh, slots were cut. So, you see one is 52 degree, 40 degree, another one is parallel to the tunnel axis. Uh, but then all were cut normal to the wall of the tunnel. The cancellation pressure for each of the flat jack A, B and C. So, you see these are the three flat jacks A, B and C. Uh, that was uh, 7.56, uh, 6.72 and 7.5 mega Pascal respectively. So, all we need to do is to compute the principal stresses and uh, their directions. So, let us take a look that how by using the theory of elasticity we can perform this analysis. So, we use the stress transformation equations uh, which are like this sigma x prime is equal to sigma x cos square theta plus sigma y sin square theta plus 2 tau x y sin theta into cos theta. Now, what are these sigma x, sigma y and tau x y? These are the global stress components and theta is the angle between the global x axis and the direction of the stress in question. So, let us take uh, the axis um, as in this uh, figure. So, taking our axis as uh, here we will take this as maybe the x axis and y axis and this direction we are taking this as plus theta. Uh, and uh, the orientation as I showed uh, this is uh, in the anti-clockwise uh, direction. So, orientation they are uh, positive anti-clockwise measure from x axis. So, if we do this uh, we will have uh, the um, dip angles uh, are going to be uh, beta for the tunnel is going to be minus 7 degree and uh, we will have here beta A which is equal to minus 40 degree plus beta tunnel that is going to be then minus 47 degree and we have uh, beta for flat jack positioned at point B that is going to be 0 degree plus uh, beta uh, for the tunnel that is going to be minus 7 degree. And finally, we have uh, beta C that is going to be 52 degree plus uh, beta tunnel and uh, that is going to be your 52 minus 7. So, that is uh, going to be 45 degree. So, this is how uh, we can uh, find out the dip angles for tunnel and the flat jacks which are installed at uh, locations A, B and C uh, which was uh, shown in this particular figure. So, you see we are taking anti-clockwise uh, from the x direction we are taking anti-clockwise positive as theta. So, accordingly we are calculating the dip here uh, at uh, this particular step. Now, because uh, each flat jack it measures the normal stress component perpendicular to the flat jack. Uh, we need to add 90 degree to each of these directions to obtain the normal uh, 
or to obtain the direction of the normal stress on each jack and therefore, the magnitude and the direction of the normal stress on each jack is going to be uh, say first I write for jack A, this is going to be sigma A which is uh, 7.56 MPA uh, with the theta A to be equal to beta A plus 90 degree. So, this is going to be 43 degree and then we have jack B uh, with the sigma B as 6.72 mega Pascal and theta B will be equal to beta B plus 90 degree and that is going to be 83 degree and finally, for jack C sigma C is equal to 7.5 mega Pascal and theta C will be beta C plus 90 degree and this will come out to be 135 degree. Uh, this uh, th uh, sigma A, sigma B and sigma C they were uh, provided in the question itself or uh, they, these uh, are obtained from the results of the flat jack test and uh, we already got beta A, beta B and beta C in the previous slide. So, therefore, we can obtain theta A, theta B and theta C in this particular manner. Now, if we just assemble the stress transformation equation for all the three jacks and if we write it into the matrix form, uh, this is what that we will get. So, here we will have the jack stress vector that is sigma A, sigma B and sigma C. This is going to be equal to cos square theta A, sin square theta A and 2 sin theta A cos theta A. Then cos square theta B, sin square theta B, 2 sin theta B cos theta b and finally, we will have it for uh, flat jack c that is cos square theta c sin square theta c and 2 sin theta c into cos theta c. So, this will complete uh, this uh, particular matrix and then here we will have the uh, global stress vector which is sigma x, sigma y and tau x y or we can write it as uh, sigma jack is equal to the matrix R and multiplied by sigma global. Now, if you just substitute the values of sigma A, sigma B and sigma C that I told you uh, just in the previous slide and uh, also for theta A, theta B and theta C in all these expressions. Uh, we will get the numerical values such as uh, here this is going to be 7.56, 6.72 and then 7.50. Uh, this is equal to 0 0.535, 0.465, 0 0.998, 0 0.015, 0 0.985 and 0 0.242, then 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and minus 1.0. Then this multiplied by this sigma vector, sigma x, sigma y and tau xy. Now, if we invert this equation which is written in the matrix uh, form, what we get is uh, sigma global as R inverse sigma jack. So, we need to find out the inverse of this matrix. This is going to be sigma x, sigma y and then tau x y that is equal to 1.093 minus 0 0.952, 0 0.860 minus 0 
वन पॉइंट ज़ीरो टू वन एंड ज़ीरो पॉइंट वन वन थ्री ज़ीरो पॉइंट फोर सेवन नाइन ज़ीरो पॉइंट ज़ीरो थ्री फोर माइनस ज़ीरो पॉइंट फाइव वन फोर This should be multiplied by the stress vector seven point five six six point seven two and then seven point five zero. So this is how that uh, we are going to obtain our inverse, and this equation can be written in this particular manner. Now we can find out by multiplying this matrix with the uh, stress vec uh, vector. So we get sigma global. As eight point three one six point seven zero then zero point zero, the units are going to be megapascal. Now you see here this term tau x y coming out to be equal to zero. So what does this mean that the stresses sigma x and sigma y they are going to be the principal stresses so here what we got is that sigma x and sigma y they are going to be the principal stresses reason being that tau xy working out to be equal to 0 so this uh, principal stresses these are horizontal and vertical why do you remember the axes that we took this was x axis and this was y axis and uh, some of these uh, this is a reasonable result and here you see this is the sigma x 8.31 and uh, the sigma y value is 6.70 so you see that the horizontal stress is coming out to be more than the vertical stress that also is uh, quite reasonable because similar situation uh, is there in the field most of the time so in this case what we have is the horizontal stress which is sigma x is coming out to be more than the vertical stress which is sigma y which is usually the situation so this is how uh, using various steps and uh, analyzing the data which we obtain from the flat jack test we can determine the state of stress which is global state of stress and uh, therefore this global state of stress gives us the in situ state of stress in the rock mass so this is how we can use the data from the flat jack test so these are the references uh, that uh, i used uh, to Uh, explain you this uh, flat jack test so today we discussed about uh, one test that is flat jack test for the determination of uh, in situ state of stress there are other methods such as hydraulic fracturing method so in the next class uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, this hydraulic fracturing test thank you very much